Hello everyone, welcome to Crash Course Medicine. This is Emily speaking and today we're going to be talking about Sudden Infant Death Syndrome or SIDS. So let's start by asking a few questions to see what our baseline knowledge is. Question 1. Which of these is a risk factor for SIDS? A. Prone sleeping position. B. Being breastfed. C. Using a dummy. Or D. Sleeping in the parental bedroom. The answer is A. Prone sleeping position. Question 2. What needs to be ruled out before SIDS can be diagnosed? A. Accidental suffocation. B. Non-accidental death, such as abuse or trauma. C. Respiratory infection. Or D. All of the above. The answer is all of the above. Question 3. What is the prevalence of SIDS in the United Kingdom? A. 1 death per thousand. B. 0.6 per thousand. C. 0.1 per thousand. Or D. 0.3 per thousand. The answer is D. 0.3 per thousand. So today we're going to be talking about SIDS. What is it? What are the symptoms, risk factors and history? Investigations and differential diagnosis. Clinical examination treatment and then summary and we'll go back over the questions that we just asked in order to see how much we've learned today. So what is sudden infant death syndrome? It's defined as the sudden death of an infant under one year old which remains unexplained after thorough case investigation including autopsy, examination of scene and review of history. This is one of the leading causes of post neonatal infant death. Studies have shown there are differences in the brainstem of 70% of infants who have died from SIDS, indicating that such cases represent immature development centres responsible for arousal, cardiovascular and respiratory functions. When the cardiorespiratory system becomes compromised, these infants may not become aroused to defend against it, resulting in sudden death. SIDS is also known as cot death. Triple risk hypothesis. The triple risk hypothesis explains SIDS by three factors converging to result in infant death. These three risk categories are A. A vulnerable infant, prematurity or low birth weight. B. In a critical period during homeostatic controlled development. And C. An exogenous stressor such as smoke exposure, sleep or overheating. Breweries, brief resolved unexplained events are when live patients may be seen after a brewery. Brewery patients share many of the same risk factors for SIDS. SIDS is associated with these risk factors. Sleeping position, prone or side sleeping, sleeping surface, so soft sleeping surfaces, sleeping arrangements, smoke exposure, not being breastfed and prematurity. Protective factors against SIDS are breastfeeding, pacifier use, room sharing and immunisations. You can also reduce the risk by having a safe sleeping environment. So signs of a brewery, cyanosis, breathing difficulties, abnormal limb movements, history to take, did the infant have a foreign body ingestion? Does the infant have a history of apnea? What was the time and amount of the last meal? Was the baby asleep or awake? How did the baby seem before the brewery? What was the child's sleeping position? Did the infant change colour? Let's take a look at a case history. A three month old infant, previously healthy, was found apneic and cyanotic. The mother calls 999 and begins CPR. When the ambulance arrives, the baby is still apneic, pulseless and asystolic. Questioning of the parents reveals that the baby was healthy that morning, fed well during the day and had no sick contacts. The baby was taking no medications and the parents deny access to medications. The baby had been growing and developing normally. The parents report typically placing the baby in the prone position for sleeping as the baby seemed more comfortable and slept better in that position. Both parents are smokers and the mother admits to smoking on average just over 10 cigarettes a day during the pregnancy. 
Investigations. Blood culture. This can evaluate for bacterial, viral or fungal path pathogens. A CSF culture, as above. Urine culture. Serum chemistry. The results may be negative for other metabolic causes. Photographic record. This is negative for bruising, hemorrhages or other skin findings. Skeletal survey. Negative for bone injuries. Differential diagnosis. Accidental suffocation. With accidental suffocation, there would be sign of entrapment between two surfaces, accidental strangulation or suffocation against bedding. Non-accidental trauma or abusive injury. Bruising in unusual places, rib fractures, spiral fractures of long bones and retinal hemorrhages may be seen. Respiratory syncytial virus. This can be tested for by using a nasal swab. Upper respiratory symptoms of cough and nasal congestion will also be seen on the history. Pertussis, as above. Clinical examination. There will be absence of metabolic disease, absence of irritability or lethargy, absence of fever, cough or nasal congestion, absence of trauma. There is no treatment available as this is a fat fatal disorder. Treatment is centred around the carer and the guardians, so carer follow-up and grief counselling is essential. In summary, what have we learned? Question one, which of these is a risk factor for SIDS? Prone sleeping position, being breastfed, using a dummy, sleeping in the parental bedroom. The answer is A, prone sleeping position. These are all protective factors. Question two, what needs to be ruled out before SIDS can be diagnosed? A, accidental suffocation. B, non-accidental death, abuse or trauma. C, respiratory infection. Or D, all of the above? The answer is D, all of the above. Question three. What is the prevalence of SIDS in the United Kingdom? A, one death per thousand. B, 0 0.6 deaths per thousand. C, 0 0.1 per thousand. Or D, 0 0.3 per thousand. The answer is 0 0.3 per thousand. Thank you everyone. That comes to the end of the slideshow. I hope you found it useful. Please come back to Crash Course Medicine for more revision material. Bye!